Welcome to Talking Wow, a podcast where, believe it or not, we talk about World of Warcraft. And in this episode, we are going to be talking about what makes Dragonflight good. And to do that, I have not one, but two very special people with me. And joining for the first time on the show, it is our very special guest. Sorry, Marty, I'm going to introduce our guest first. And that is the wonderful Syl on hiatus Whispers of War podcast, a very favorite World of Warcraft podcast of mine, and also doing some really cool stuff over on the Etsy at Dutchy Doodles, making stickers and lots of fun things over there. Welcome, Syl. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. You are so welcome. And, and as mentioned in that intro, Marty's here as well. Hey, Marty. Yay, am I allowed to talk now? You are. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. I'm here too. I've been here the whole time. <laughs> I guess thank you for being here as well. Thank you for showing up. <laughs> <laughs> but we are here. We are here to talk about what makes Dragonflight good. Because there was an expansion just before Dragonflight. I can't even remember the name of it. It was that terrible. And we've moved into this new era now of Dragonflight. And some people are heralding it as the new age of Warcraft. I myself returned to world of warcraft in dragonflight it does feel a bit like a new page has turned and we are starting a, a fresh chapter uh, so sil how has your introduction to dragonflight been not bad i have to say i think like all of us have played for many years with or without breaks and i think can i say that we've all become a little bit jaded with some of the expansions like they start off really strong and then uh, fizzles out because they change certain things that we're not happy with it does seem to be a bit of a formula there doesn't it yeah. where it's just like oh my god it's the best expansion ever oh my god the leveling the questing and then i, th I think the last few expansions have, have been ex exactly that where the leveling has been so freaking good mm -hmm. and yeah. then and then other stuff happens and you're just like yeah. oh <laughs> they want you to do a lot of stuff in order to mm. keep up mm. with everything yeah, but I, I never really got that feeling with Dragonflight. I mean, like, confession, I'm, I you know, I've been playing it since it came out, but I don't have a level 70 yet because I just get too distracted. I'm just finding this out now. Sorry, I'm going to have to cancel the whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, if you're entertained and doing stuff and, and, and finding new stuff to do and you're enjoying what you're doing, I think, you know, while gaming, I think that's a success. That's what games are for, right? For you mm. to be entertained and have fun. Yeah, and the thing is, I think it started off quite strong with the invasions because I actually quite enjoyed the invasions um, because it was a great way to catch up with gear and, you know, the transmogs were really nice and it just it was like an event and especially because I'm on an RP server, it just... Not that people are RPing, but you just see a big community come together and it just makes it really nice. And, you know, you read people's profiles and things like that. So for me, that was just like, oh, it's back when everyone was like doing something as a group together. And I get that feeling like that was a good start to get into Dragonflight. And I think they did that really well. Uh, even though I, um, ever since Cataclysm, I hated all the dragons. So, <laughs> yeah, I was a little bit like, hesitant with this expansion because I thought oh really we're getting dragons again but I'm actually I have to admit that I really like how they're portraying them this time and just you know I, I think the character development of, of the dragons is really good and just that we get a bit more insight in what happened to them and all those things and that they're not flawless and yeah I, I don't know I'm, I'm really enjoying the story so far I, I think you are right in a way that to be worried when blizzard were like okay we're doing the dragon expansion because it really felt like you know it was that emergency situation where it was like break glass <laughs> and it's just like behind it was dragonfly it was just like yep it's the the whole place is on fire we need to break out the dragon expansion because of of what's happened just before and i think there was that concern that because you know the dragon aspects are such an integral part of the warcraft lore that this needs to be handled right you know there's the you have to handle this with care because there's a lot of history here. You know, it's a bit like Wrath of the Lich King. There's a lot of history involved in that story. You better not f*** this one up, Blizzard. So far in Dragonflight, they, they do seem to be taking that more of a slower approach with the story and building up to something. 
probably all gods. <laughs> Marty, what what has your initial impressions of Dragonflight been so far? Because you have, unlike Syl, you are our balancing aspect of this conversation. <laughs> Marty has at least 500 level 70 characters. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I've hit 500 quite yet, but it's close. It, it's close. But I think that, I mean, we already talked about the story uh, and the leveling, and I think the leveling and the story so far has been good, uh, has been really good. Um, and I really liked, uh, because you sort of brought up the, <laughs> the the whole, I have lots of level 70 characters. I like the fact that when you have leveled through the story and you have your first level 70, um, your alts can do whatever they want. They can go straight to the Dragon Isles. They, they have them the mount. Uh, if you collected all the stuff for your for your Dragon Mount, you have it account wide. You don't have to unlock it every time. There's no stupid scenario you need to play through every freaking time you want to go to the new expansion. You just go there and you can quest. You can do world quest. You can you know, to go mining and herbing. Uh, whatever you want to do, um, you just go do that and level that way on your on your all your your, your secondary characters. So so yeah. That's that feels really, really good. Yeah, I think the way they initiated the dragon flight as a whole, like as the, you know, getting your dragon and being able to fly, that has been like an age old debate that we could probably have a totally entirely separate episode about, about flying. But it feels like they potentially hit a real good sweet spot. And I don't know how they're going to handle this in future expansions, but the fact that you come to the dragon hours, you start on foot, but very quickly you acquire your dragon and this entire expansion was built for flying it's so evident with the the landscapes and just how it's set out and it's absolutely stunning and i'm someone that has always felt like flying has ruined the immersion of world of warcraft i'm like a boots on the ground person i think the world was meant to be seen mainly from the ground and i know people love flying and it, it's very convenient but that's what it's turned into it's just turned into a convenience with dragon riding it's just actually, wow, this is such an engaging mechanic. This feels really good to just travel around this entire expansion. And I just have fun traveling from like A to B to C. I, I don't get tired of that anymore. And I know the Dragon Isles themselves are, aren't too big, but it still takes a, you know, a few minutes to get from one side to the other. But I just always find myself really engaged when I'm flying around. And I feel like sometimes I see something that I haven't seen before because I'm approaching from the air. And then when you do hit the ground, perhaps you're heading back to Valdraken or you're in some zone doing some quests, that just that perspective shift and it feels really good. And I don't know how we go on from this feeling because this just feels right. And it feels like this is a really big reason for me why Dragonflight so far has just worked. Yeah, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how they would top this. I mean, I know it's just come out and it will probably be another two years, but it's it's big boots to fill for the next expansion, unless they royally mess up. <laughs> I mean, figure, fingers crossed, Sil. Fingers <laughs> crossed. Uh, it's so far so good. So we're, we're going to roll with the positives that, <laughs> that things are going to be okay. But I mean, you, we won't be surprised if they do, but we're hoping, mm -hmm. we're hoping that the consistency of what we've seen so far in Dragonflight continues. Yeah, mm. absolutely. So we've talked a little bit about going through the zones and going through uh, the questing, which is always a real strong point of World of Warcraft expansions, I think. Anyway, I think moving forward with that, we've seen probably another big reason for the success of Dragonflight is that removal of the shared power system. That's mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. not in here anymore. That's something that came in with Legion and has been copied across in various forms. And now that we don't have that anymore, it does feel like the game has this freedom for you to approach it how you want to play it. I really think that not having that power grind that you need to log into daily to not feel like you're behind is the best thing that they have removed from the game that's not in the game anywhere and it actually and i know that you know we all love playing world of warcraft but it actually allows you to not play world of warcraft and, mm -hmm. you know, so it might sound counterintuitive uh, on a World of Warcraft podcast, but, you know, we actually do want to do other things with our lives, uh, too. So it, it is actually nice to not feel like you have to log in every day uh, and, and do stuff. 
Yeah, so you can、uh, spend more time in WoW Classic, right, Sil? <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's true. It's true. I'm not going to deny that. I I hop in between expansions <laughs> and, and versions a lot because there's again there's there's lots to do in all every I think every form has something different because I don't need to play classic for the story. I know what the story is. I was there when it came out, but it is a completely different game to play than Dragonflight, and I think that is you know if I want to do some mindless grinding, that's basically what I go for、uh, in in like vanilla. Uh, or any of the old classic servers. If I want more nostalgia, I'll go back to Wrath of the Lich, Lich King. But Dragonflight just gives you—it's very casual friendly, if that makes sense.、Mm-hmm. So if you, you know, like for me, I, I'm just like, well, actually, I don't want a quest now. I just want to do and get everything from the the、um, what's it called the the trade thing and and just get. Those rewards and go for this and you know something like that. I just want to focus on something else, or I I want to get this mount now, and it never feels like I'm behind everyone. And I think that's that's quite nice. It just feels less pressured into, like Marty said, you don't have to log in every day because even with Animal Crossing, I get really like, oh my god, I need to log in every day for my Nook mounts, and I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be behind on your payments to Tom Nook. I know. That guy will find you. F- you up. So it's you know it's stuff like that like Dragonflight feels so much more like it's it's no longer a job like a chore because、mm. I think that's that's the problem as well when you've played as as long as all of us have then at one point you're like yeah well I'm at this age now that I have to have a job and other responsibilities and、Boo. yeah I know it sucks but unfortunately that's what they want from me nowadays <laughs> so. I guess you know if you want to be that person like I was like what fifteen years ago and I started playing and I could sit for nights on end and just play. You can with this expansion. You can do that because there are so many different things you could focus on. If you can't do that anymore, you're not being penalized for it. I that's the thing that I can really appreciate that they actually now see. Okay, yeah, everyone has grown up who played this game and is still playing it, but there are also newer players who are younger and who have a different lifestyle. And I just it feels much more. Balanced for everyone now. Yeah, no, and I think actually you are a great example of potentially why Dragonflight is good, and it, it kind of comes into Marty's answer as well about not having to play it as much because you're you're on here right now and you're like, hey, I don't have a level seventy yet, and really, you're not that far behind people that have been. <laughs> Logging in every day, and you know they've got their their gear, their eye level up high. Because if you were suddenly to decide, hey, you know what, I want to get playing Dragonflight a bit, a bit more. I want to get into some content, or you know wherever you want to go, it really wouldn't take too much time for you suddenly to be caught up for the likes of me or even Marty,、uh, despite his five、uh, hundred alts, and you'd be able to be enjoying the game fairly quickly compared to expansions that we've seen in the past where. You may have felt that you've had to log in over these past few months to keep up, because if you don't, you're not going to be able to do those things when you want to do them. But now, it's really stripped away a lot of those walls that stopped people from doing the things that they want to do, or it was just that pressure of feeling like you have to do this. And I think that's not a good feeling to have, really. It's it almost feels like you are being forced to do something, and、mm-hmm. sometimes it works. But like you say, so a lot of us. Who grew up with Warcraft? We got older, and、uh, we we can't sit in chairs、Lies. for more than lies. <laughs> we can't sit in chairs for more than two hours, and not officially. <laughs> <laughs> and we we have to take the game at a bit of slower pace. I'm not talking about everyone, of course. I I see people older than me, and they are doing the WoW grind. They are keeping the、uh, <laughs> the representation there for us old farts. But it it really is. Opening those doors for people to do whatever content they want and not feeling like they're gonna fall behind. And honestly, I I think that is a great thing. I think that having ways for people to catch up or just get back into the game as、mm-hmm. quickly as possible that that's what we need these days. Just because of how gaming works and how fast moving everything is, and we're always busy looking at the next game coming out or or something like that. And to always know that hey, I can go back to World of Warcraft and I'm not gonna be too far behind. It's a good feeling.、Mm-hmm. I think that I might have mentioned it、uh, before as well, but、uh, because we, we're right、uh, when we're recording this, it's right before the next, the five point one is, is is going to hit. But there was five point one. Sorry, what are we at? 
Did I say five point one? I don't know. The next, the next point one, ten point one. Ten point one. Yeah. We didn't, um, we didn't go back in time there. No. <laughs> no. It's like um, holy shit, we've been sitting on this recording a long time. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, we just had uh, like a month ago, probably or something like that. We had like ten point zero point seven um, that brought in a new area, that brought in catch up gear and and catch up mechanics for those people who want to get ready for five point one. And it sort of feels like an end of expansion thing, like that that phase where you know everything is just sort of a little bit more open and people are having a lot of fun. Uh, it, there's a lot of different catch up mechanics, and they actually did that now in between patches instead of just waiting until the the end of the expansion. And it actually feels really really good. It, it feels fun, and and now I have a wide range of, of of alts I can choose from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I just think, uh, like you said, you know, especially when you have so many alts, and I think that was the problem with the previous expansions. If they would change a class in a in a in a patch or, or an update, some people were like, okay, I can't play my class anymore because I don't enjoy this what they changed. Mm -hmm. um, but it was a nerf or a buff or, you know, that's irregardless. People just didn't enjoy that they had to restart with a new character. Not so much the leveling process because, it, you know, that became quicker and quicker at one point. But it was making sure like, oh, now I need to, my heart of Azeroth needs to be like, you mm -hmm. know, all the way uh, uh, pimped out. And now I need to get this and I need to get that. And it's just, it's another chore. And it's just before you can go or your rate leader says, oh, I want you to switch up. Okay, well, that will take me about two weeks to uh, to get there. And it's just, hmm. that's not fun. That's like having a second, well, for me, that's not fun. It's like having a second job. And especially if they change a lot or you have different alts that you just really enjoy playing. Because, you know, now they've changed, I feel like they've changed a lot of classes in a way that I find it very difficult to pick one to actually go like, yeah, this is now my main. That's probably also why <laughs> it's taken so long for me to <laughs> not get to 70 yet. Everything feels new yet familiar, but it's it's. I want to try things out, and it doesn't feel like we have the cookie cutter builds anymore. It, there feels like there's a little bit more freedom in how you want to flavor your hunter, your rogue, or and I think that is a good thing because it makes everything really interesting. But then at least when you want to catch up and you finally settled on one or two characters, it's easier to do that. I think just to add on to that as well, because you're talking about changing classes and or changing specs. I think one of the other things that has been really good in Dragonflight is the talent tree revamp as well. Mm -hmm. That the fact that they brought back the a lot of the, the classic feel, I think, of what talents are supposed to feel like. And I know there'll be people out there screaming like, yeah, but there's just all these talents that you have to pick anyway. And it doesn't really feel like you have much choice. But you you do. If you want to play the game how you want to play and some people want to try and break the meta when it comes to different builds, like you have that freedom to do that. And you have a lot more choice now with your talents. And something I really like to do as well is that you have the ability to save certain specs and you can easily switch between like even different builds within a spec. And that's really encouraging you to experiment a bit more with your builds or maybe selecting one ability and not this other ability and lets you have that freedom to do that. Some people don't want to do that. Some people are just happy with certain talents and they just play the game that way. And you can do that. But then for the people that like to do the min-maxing or just like to have that freedom to play the class how they want to. They can really customize their class, maybe not as much as they could back in Classic with the talents there, but mm -hmm. it is drawing from that. And I think that is something that initially when I was getting back into Dragonfly, I saw that talent tree revamp and I was like, damn, like it's actually feeling a bit more like an RPG again with actually having a bit of a choice instead of just that little row of talents that they removed it to. And it just felt like everyone picked the same ones anyway. But now, I don't know, Marty, is there diversity in people's specs and how they are doing their talents? Because you're the you're the raider here. So you would probably have a bit more uh, knowledge on that. Raider and Mythic Plus and and I thought everyone just went in and chose a starter build. Isn't that just how, what you do? <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm doing as well, one of my alts. No, I actually, I actually think that because I can see that from my Mythic Plus group that we do have a few people who, who have been, you know, 
just trying out so many different things to figure out what works the best and what doesn't. So I think you are right, Tom, that people are actually experimenting quite a bit. I have to admit that I, I am not because I, I guess when I find something that works, then I just then I, I can be a little I can have a little bit of, of a tunnel vision sometimes. You're uh, <laughs> what we call stubborn. Yeah. Sure, but uh, but no, I do, I do think it's nice to 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 have some things you can you. I mean, even I have done it in raiding as well because there is you know um, the very last fight of the raid you need to interrupt so uh, you know ways to to handle those those orbs and and if you cannot do that then you're relying on others and you know my class I could spec into you know different options so I could would get more ways to to handle those orbs it just you know stuff like that where one specific encounter can make you change your your spec uh, uh, completely well not completely but change it up a little bit definitely already is in the game right now yeah it 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 has added a bit of an extra layer to like your pve content your raids and your mythic dungeons that the fact that you could potentially switch talents up on the fly and i'm right in saying that marty you can do that now when you're in a dungeon yep, you yep. can as long as you're not in I combat think, obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think in mythic plus uh it's locked once you start the mythic plus because it's a timed dungeon but I actually don't know if you can leave the dungeon and then change uh, the spec. I'm not sure, but I mean, one once that is going to cost you a lot of time to do. Yeah, that. potentially. So, so yeah, there's break in the matter, and then there's uh, just I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, so yeah, but we, which is also one of those things where you know um, I have walked into a mythic plus and we started doing it, and then halfway through I'm realizing, oh, I actually don't have that ability because oh, I'm in my rating spec and not in my mythic plus spec. Whoopsies. <laughs> <laughs> one of the other big features of this expansion, and I don't know still if you have given it a go, but it's the Drac Fear Evoker, which is the new race class combo which they dropped into the game. Have you managed to uh, head over and uh, free your Drakfir from their stasis? Yes, <laughs> I had to. Yeah, I mean, I I have too many alts, uh, as it's many people who know me know Have you, Marty? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why me and Marty always go on so well. <laughs> yeah, I think we it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's, yeah, I mean, for me, it's it's more from a RPers point of view. And I just, I'm always very curious to see what customizations characters get and... What they're like in game and uh, I'm, I'm not going to say that i'm in love with the class but i really like that they have something different out there because we got a lot with this we got a new race and we got a new class uh, and i'm actually quite happy that you can only have evokers as as um the drag uh, I, I prefer that i don't know i can't remember if monks used to be like that but it was only pandarans don't but, think so, but I'm not completely sure. I feel like it was, so I'm going to disagree with Marty. Okay. Just for the uh, something we agreed with when we started podcasting, <laughs> and we had to disagree more. So one of us is going to be right. <laughs> but there's something about that that I quite like. That, that that it's just you know, yeah, I know that some people are really hung up on a certain race and and they want to play this class, but like with druids, I just feel like it, it has it's something special, you know. So you have to you have to keep like. I don't know. That, that's how I feel. I, I, I like the, I, kind of like exclusivity too. This is for yeah. this race and, you know. And I think that will be something that probably just exists during the expansion because we've <laughs> yeah. already had rumors that, you know, once Dragonflight's done, the Drakfir head back to mainland Azeroth, suddenly they're learning how to cast fireballs and things like that. And <laughs> well, I mean, they can already cast, I mean, they're dragons. That should be too hard. So maybe Drakfir is becoming mages isn't too far far stretched but i know we'll we'll see them opening up eventually but yeah for the initial flavor of the expansion i think it is nice just to have seeing just seeing drag fear evokers around because if if you could you know a human evoker or uh, a worgen evoker i don't know why i'm picking I... all classes that are be able to turn into humans but <laughs> but you want to see a load of drag fear around because that's the immersion of the expansion it should be like that we should be seeing a mm. load of drag fear around this expansion aisle. I don't even know how they would make other classes being uh, evokers because the the evokers has you know different abilities that make them fly and, and spew fire and stuff like that. And it, it's just how, why how would other classes do that? Um. <laughs> they automatically have to be engineers uh, so yeah, they can maybe. build 
build like these mechanical wings <laughs> maybe but but that being said I, I will have to say that i'm i quite enjoy playing evoker um i actually have picked an evoker as my main for this expansion um uh, as a healer uh, because i really really enjoyed the, the healing aspect of of them and and just being able to uh, zoom around the, the 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 playing field uh, as you're flying up to 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 your your um, friends and heal them so really good fun i think i what i specifically really like is the um because like, this is again typical me i like that we get new models for certain characters because I never was that interested in the blue dragon until his new uh, look. <laughs> so I get where Jane is coming from. So, you know. There we go. Those dragons are looking fine, aren't they? <laughs> they really are. They're looking really good. And can I just say the appreciation that we don't put Alexstrasza in like just a bikini anymore? Yes, thank you. Yes. Not that, I mean, she, she's gorgeous and, I, you know, I'm all for female empowerment and who wants to wear a bikini, go ahead. But it really does feel a little bit more like, okay, yeah, we're not just only having, like, for the male gaze. <laughs> it's also for everyone. <laughs> mm, I agree. <laughs> Which I think is just nice that she's actually not just an object anymore. They gave her a, f a few more clothes and a hell of a lot more polygons. And I think we all very much appreciative of that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, so that's all we had time for for this episode of Talking Well. I want to take this moment again to say thank you so much for our guest, Syl, for joining us on this episode of Talking About What Makes Dragonflight Good. We obviously didn't cover everything. There is probably things we totally missed, and maybe we said something that we thought was good that you didn't, and you can obviously let us know about that in the places that you do that. But until next time, thank you very much again, Syl, and bye. 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 Thanks for tuning in, champion! Did you enjoy this episode of Talking Wow? If so, why not drop a review on your podcast catcher of choice or leave us a comment? You can find Talking Wow on Twitter or YouTube over at Talking Wow. Hope to see you again soon!